Welcome to another video in Belgrade, Serbia. Today again I'm at OFK Beer Grad. I filmed the game on Saturday against Zemun, the local derby. If you haven't checked that video out already, I suggest you do, it's a great video. But today I'm here to find out a bit more about the history and the tradition of this great club and also what the fans have been doing to keep this club alive. Because unfortunately it's fallen hard times. I think this is a great story that needs to be shared to the world and hopefully the footballing world community will come together after watching this video and give this massive club a helping hand. I've got to say the fans here are incredible. Behind me they're working, clean up the stadium, they've been here for a few hours now, so credit to them. Okay, let's go and delve in a little deeper and see what exactly is going on at OFK Beergrad. Okay, I'm in the press room of OFK Beergrad and here to tell you more about the club is Lazar, the marketing manager. Thanks for having me Lazar, really appreciate the welcome. So, I've got a few questions for you. Tell the viewers who are watching more about OFK Beergrad, the history and the tradition of the club. First of all, thank you, sir, for coming here. No problem, uh, my pleasure. Yeah, the history about our club, uh, we were founded in uh, 1911, uh, actually by, let's say, uh, some guys sitting in a bar in a tavern. Uh, Sounds good. Yeah. They just uh, realized they wanted to found a club. Yeah, I just yeah. talked shortly how it is. Uh, so a few beers and then also, why don't we form a football club? And that was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. great. I, I yeah. like it. I like that idea. Great. Yeah. So, uh, in general, that's how it started. Uh, after that, we start getting very fast professional. Uh, we, at this time, it was Kingdom of Yugoslavia, so uh, yeah, yeah. we were the most, uh, we were the club with most trophies. Uh, we started to attract uh, people with our openly, all, all, uh, how to say, uh, open uh, kind of uh, playing football. Uh, yeah, it's I mentioned to you, yeah, yeah, yeah in tactics, I mentioned to you about, we had many friendly games, one of them is with Liverpool yeah. in the 30s and so on. Nice. Uh, after that, in general, the Second World War started, uh, so there was a pause at this time, at least it was not professional. Yeah. Uh, before, now I go back, before that we had several legends, uh, football players, like my personal favorite, uh, Blagoje Mosha Marjanovic from that time. Nice. Uh, Second World War happened, as I told you, mm -hmm. and uh, after that, in 1945, the communists, regime took over the Kingdom of Yugoslavia and it became, yeah. became the Socialist uh, Republic of uh, Yugoslavia. Yeah. Uh, at this time they didn't like the idea for, because OFK Belgrade before, I forgot to mention that, had the name BSK, which means uh, Belgrade Sport Club. So they didn't like the idea for a former club that was not established by the communists to be the main club in the country. Yeah. So uh, what they did, they closed us down, we didn't exist as a club, uh, and after uh, yeah, not so long time, uh, the same people from BSK uh, formed uh, FC Metalats, uh, wow. which was our name at that time, yeah. and after a few years we changed to BSK, but that didn't work out, so we changed to FK Belgrade uh, to keep surviving uh, through the <laughs> communist regime. Right. So, uh, yeah, yeah. at the end, uh, yeah, it worked out well. Uh, we gained our nickname Romantics because yes, of the yeah. same yeah. football style we're playing, very attractive to see. Yeah. Uh, we, are, we became again a big club, I mean, amongst the top if, uh, in, in Yugoslavia at that time. Uh, we played the uh, uh, semi final of the, I can't pronounce it in English, but European Cup. Winners. Uh, yes, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's sorry. Kind of like nice. It's the, yeah. You've got the conference and, and all these yeah, different yeah, formats. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At this time it was yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. You had, you know. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so we played against Tottenham the same semi finals. Uh, nice. That's our, let's say, biggest European achievement. Did you, did you uh, go to White Hart Lane or, or was it a neutral ground? Or was uh, it, yeah. it was both there and here. Oh, uh, nice. Actually, okay. it was in White Hart Lane over there, yeah. but here our stadium was not accepted by UEFA. Right, okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, so we had to play at Partizan Stadium with oh. Tottenham. Okay. Uh, the yeah. stadium yeah. was full. Actually, yeah. all I bet the atmosphere 
is absolutely yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they talk about that. I don't know. I was not born that yet. Actually, yeah. fun fact: uh, several years ago, Partizan played with Tottenham, and I yeah. was at this moment at our shop here at the stadium. So yeah. some Tottenham uh, fans came, older guys, right? Okay. In their fifties. Okay. They came here, and like yeah. seven, eight of them, and started buying scarves. Okay. Stuff. I was like, why? Why, why yeah. are you here? Yeah, but they say you remember the 1963 when we played semi-finals. So I'm like, yeah, I know that. Yeah, that's our only European trophy because they won that finals. Anyway, yeah. so uh, at this time we got many legends in 60s, 70s, 80s: uh, Skoblar, Santrac, uh, yeah. uh, Ilya Petkovic, and so on. Uh, later on, again, communist Yugoslavia in the 90s uh, nice. fell apart. We went a bit to the second league, but up again. Yeah. And, for me, we have a glorious history now, not now, in the past six, seven years, but yeah. in, let's say in the 2000s uh, and a few years after that, we, we have many, our youth school is, was one of the top 20, 25 in Europe. Nice. Uh, everybody knows, especially from, from UK, uh, yeah. color of uh, Bra Bani Ivanovic, they came from OFK. Uh, we have many more other players also, uh, not to mention them all now, and uh, that's it in general. We won uh, four times the cup, after the yes. Second World War we won four times the cup. And uh, that's it, what can I say, now we are in a bad situation, we play third league, uh, mm. we have financial problems, uh, the fans took over the club because the fans are the last one left to defend the yeah. club and we are doing our best now to uh, put the club back on its track again uh, because we Where it needs to, yeah, to be. We were never in the third league, this yeah. is not the place for us. Oh, I spoke to you earlier and I said to you, for me, there's a term in England what we use, it's called sleeping giants yeah. and that's what I would say about this club. Yeah. You know, it's a sleeping giants, it exactly. needs to be you know, awakened, which yeah. you guys, I know what a great job you're doing to keep this club alive, and I'm sure you know, you'll, you'll awake the giants, that's, that's what I feel. Yeah. Like I say, so. we, hope, we hope for that, we hope for that mm. for sure. So how did you become a fan yourself of OFK, was it through family or through friends? Uh, actually it was through friends. Right, uh, okay. In general, uh, to become a fan of 5K through family is not uh, so often uh, in the past few decades. Uh, right. okay. Before it was more often, but anyway, it was through friends. Yeah. Actually, uh, my first game was not so long time ago, but I fell in love at the first game. Uh, yeah. It was 12 years ago from now. Yeah. yeah. So what, what made you fall in love with the club? What was it? Was it was it the football or was it the fans or was it was it the feeling of the stadium or was it just everything? Was it? Yeah, that's a hard yeah. question. I, in general, it was everything. I mean, yeah. from the football because I love football. Yeah, yeah. Uh, even though I never was good at playing it, uh, the atmosphere, the part that you are, uh, how to say, uh, we're not the biggest club. Yeah, uh, yeah. Now in, in Serbia, but I think that you are with, uh, with, uh, with fans, with a club who is running like a family, both the fans, the club, yeah. everybody knows each other, right. you know, uh, plus I don't live so far away from the stadium and That's everything, so well, yeah, everybody yeah. around the stadium is for sure fans of what well, I went to watch a game the other day and it was early kickoff. it was a 2 o'clock kickoff. And I stood on the terrace, I didn't film that day, but just talking to the fans and um, get the feeling of what the club means to the fans. For me, it's, it's the lifeblood of the community. Unthinkable, if it was to fold, that would be, like I say, it's, it's a big problem, but you know, you guys have done incredibly well to keep, keep, keep it going. Yeah, in general, if this club would disappear, which we will never let it happen. Yeah. Uh, it would be a big, big, big uh, mistake. I mean, big, I'd say very bad thing, not for only here for local, for yeah. all Belgrade, for all Serbia, because everybody knows about us. Yeah. Uh, it would be really general. I mean, I would, in general, I would lose part of my life because yeah. if it wasn't through this club, I would not get 
all of my best friends who I have. Yeah. I will never meet and uh, have my two godfathers. Uh, nice. I will never meet my wife. I would never have those children I have if it wasn't for this club. So everything in my life what happened happened through this club. So if I lost this club, yeah. I would lose yeah, everything. Yeah, I mean, I would have my, my family home left yeah. and my friends, but this club is connected to everything I have in my life. And yeah. I, I'm not the only one for sure for that. So yeah. we will not let this happen. We will not let I this like happen. It. Yeah. No, I, I really, like I say, I really respect the fans, the, the job that they've done. Uh, what, you're paying all the bills at the moment, so what, what bills are you paying? Uh, you, you, you're counting for everything? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah so I mean, uh, in general, uh, first of all, we are mostly getting now donations from people, yeah. both abroad, from here from Serbia, everybody who is, you know, recognizing the situation yeah. and that we are not... Uh, stealing the money, putting it in our pockets yeah. or something like that. We do everything transparently, we yeah. do everything openly yeah. every month. This is how much we see, this yeah. is how much where it's spent. Yeah. We pay all the bills. It's Incredible. Uh, from I mean from water, electricity to yeah. player salaries, everything, everything, workers who work here at the yeah. stadium. Uh, there are many debts. This is yeah. what is and destroying yeah. us mostly and uh, we are slowly starting now to pay off the debts, that's the plan, we just need to stabilize the finance, the monthly yeah. finance for our club. Right. Yes. Yeah. Talking about what you've been paying, I was speaking to one of the fans as well, and I was saying the uh, half-time apples for the referee has been accounted for, you know, so it's, it's everything. <laughs> Which... yeah. Yeah. Um, that's, it sounds like a bit of a headache, um, you know, to, to, to follow to follow all that. But uh, yeah, I mean, in general, we already have some guys who are there uh, for several years. Yeah. I mean, in the board and everything, they were okay. in former boards, you know, watching just what's happening. Yeah. So we have we have uh, let's say five guys or maybe a few more who are very experienced. Some are here every day, depends on what they were, but some are here every day for like. 20 years, 30 years, awesome. every, okay. almost every single day. So we, we have guys who know how to run the club. Yeah. Only thing is we never ran a club before. So now yeah. when you yeah. finally get all those burdens on you to, yeah. to, to keep the club going on, you know, we are fighting, but everything is going well. Yeah. We're giving our maximum. So from everything, I mean, yeah. general organization of every football game, you know, you've got stewards, you've got you got uh, it's a lot, it's a lot. break, as yeah. you said, for referees. You you have to give them, you know, a snack, stuff like that. Blah blah. blah pay Incredible. this, pay that. Organize everything. So in general, we we, we do literally everything. Yeah. You know, we yeah. we're doing uh, our best to cut off, you know, the unnecessary finance. You know. Yeah. Uh, let's say, uh, for example, we have a kitchen here at the club. Right, and okay. we have some players who are not from Belgrade, right? We have yeah. our own apartments next to the stadium. Yes, uh, yes, we yes. organized through a restaurant who is making a food for them. We give yeah. them the kitchen, we're making food for them. We cut the finances there because now they get the food, let's say, for free. Oh, okay. If you understand, you know, we give them the kitchen and so yeah. on, and they are using the kitchen, they give them the, making food for them, yeah. for the players and for the people working here. So. Uh, like this, we're doing our best to get some donation and sponsorship yeah. To, yeah. to not only you know to get money in, but also to cut down the unnecessary fees and costs. Yeah, it's oh. yeah. Uh, nice. It's highly commendable. I'm like saying you, you've got my you know, utmost respect. I, I think you're doing Thank a you. wonderful job. Um, also, I noticed earlier there was fans cleaning the stadium, and they're giving their free time to help out as well. You know, it's, it's great, it's, it's incredible. Yes. Um, so a lot of people are giving their time for the club as well, you know, and not everybody, uh, they're giving, what I'm saying is they're giving free time yeah, and stuff, yeah. so... We are the club, that. there is no one left, so I mean, yes. nobody touched the stadium to clean it for yeah. a decade almost, for sure, so... Yeah. Uh, this is our second action today uh, that we're cleaning yeah. the I mean, you see, you've seen the stadium, it's a ruin yeah. in general, yeah. but we have let's say two functional terraces yeah. still. Uh, there's a lot of work to do. We can, you know, just clean it up to not be that dirty and to yeah. not have this much bushes everywhere and stuff like that. But, it's a lot uh, of work, a lot yeah, of work. Yeah, a lot of work, a lot of work, yeah. Now what
talk about sponsorship. Have you got any new sponsors of late? People coming in? Obviously, you'll be looking for more sponsorship, I, I imagine. You know, uh, it all helps. Yes. In general, what is not attracting sponsors for a long while now is that sta the stadium is not in our ownership. It's right. in the ownership of the city of Belgrade. Okay. And uh, we didn't manage to renew the contract with them, which expired 12 or 13 years ago. Right. Uh, we did manage to renew the contract with them. Uh, so we are still here, but uh, we can't do anything. So the bigger sponsors before a few years when they were coming here, as soon as they hear that we don't have a contract for the stadium, that tomorrow somebody can come here and knock on and say, get out of here, you know. Right, okay. Which we hope will not happen. Yeah. Uh, they, they are not, you know, interested because they can sponsor, donate money, help out, and, but tomorrow somebody could uh, make us all pack the bags and go away. Uh, but in general, now, to when, when, when the fans took over now for less than two months, yeah. We start attracting sponsors. We have our main sponsor, the betting company Mozart, already from yeah. the last year. And thank you know, I want to thank them very much for that. Yeah. Uh, we're hoping to prolong for another year. Uh, how to say, like, it's very hard to... First of all, you're in third league, and then the yeah. stadium problem, yeah. you know. Sponsors are not that much interested. But now, what we're doing, we're letting everybody know that the club is not doing good, yeah. uh, that we need donations. So we are now in the process of making donation sponsorship right. for all companies, whatever, a yeah. small shop, cafe, whatever, yeah. to make a monthly uh, donation, 50 euros, 100 euros, whoever wants, we'll make different packages yeah. to help the club out. Because if you have 100 or 200 local companies here that yeah. are helping out, that means, well, that's all. I mean, we have expenses of, let's say, roughly 20,000 euro per month. Right. That's our yeah. expense. Because we are a Super League club stuck in the yeah. third league, you know, we have workers, we, have, you know, yeah. we cannot say to them, go away. We don't want to do that. Yeah. Uh, so, we are, we started to attract, let's say yeah. like that, we started to attract uh, some more sponsors and donators and we have a big plan, we hope that this winter that it will become much bigger. Well hopefully with this video, this is going to attract more sponsors for the club, yeah. you can see what a great job these guys are doing here, so I urge sponsors out there, get in touch with Lazar, let's make it happen because, you know, this club has got a proud history, it's a big club, it needs to be here for the community. You know, I urge, like I say, new sponsors, get in touch. So how much would it cost to actually run this club for a year? Roughly about a quarter million euros. But that's the only to run the club smoothly. Uh, yeah. If you come to pay the debts that the club has from a long time ago, that would mean more. But to run the club, it's, yeah. uh, let's say, at this moment in third league, 20, yeah. Yeah, quarter million per year. So that's roughly like uh, one week's wage for a Premier League footballer. So, you know, if there's any Premier League footballers out there, get in touch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. would yeah. help us a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so how are the fans actually raising money for the club at the moment? What kind of things yeah, are you doing? There is, there is, uh, I mean, okay, we take donations uh, through our bank account. We have also international bank accounts, yeah. international bank wires. Uh, people come here donating cash, uh, yeah. PayPal, uh, Revolut, uh, and stuff like that. We also now, because I'm the marketing manager, right? So yeah. we open now. We started to make uh, clothing in general, uh, t-shirts, jerseys, uh, everything. I mean, everything yeah. in general. We're in process of reopening after almost ten years. Our shop in okay. few weeks will be ready and uh, we started gaining some uh, money from that it's not yeah. too much I mean in general if you count per month it doesn't help that much but it is some help yeah. uh, people are buying by supporting knowing that if you buy a t-shirt that all of those money goes to the club part of it goes to further nice. marketing uh, yeah. to further marketing uh, work uh, yeah. but most of it goes to the club to help the okay. club to survive for months. You've got a, an online website as well. 
or uh, in the process of... At the moment, the we have just the website from the club. Uh, yeah. We will make uh, open, uh, let's say, how to say, on the same website will be a shop. Shop, yeah. Okay. Uh, we have our old Facebook shop, which, which we are, how to say, renovating now. Uh, yes, yes. And uh, we're opening Instagram too, because most people here would like to order through Instagram or Facebook. Yeah. It's the, uh, well, we'll go over as well. I mean, people watching this, you know, all over the world, they'll, yeah. they'll hear the story. Yeah. And, you know, if you get a shop, up and running, I'm sure people will, will you know, buy merchandise off you. So that yeah, of course, well. even by buying merchandise, they, they support us and we yeah. ship worldwide, so it's no problem for that. Very good. <laughs> okay, so I know the fans have been in charge of the club for two months, which isn't a long time, but in that time, what would you say is your proudest achievement while working for the club? Besides of that, being a fan <laughs> and running the club, yeah. which I would be more happy for if it was in some, how to say, greater times, better times, but a fan should be recognized for the hardest times. So, in general, uh, the proudest moment, proudest um, for me is that we already paid off some smaller debts that was even left from the former board that was only running the club for approximately two months. Nice. Uh, before they left, so yeah. they left some electricity bills for this month and some players who didn't have get any salaries for two months, stuff like that. Nice. So we already leveled it to zero, how to say, so I'm very proud of yeah. that. Uh, general, this, as you said, we're running the club for a little less than two months, so there's not so much thing to say that the, the fight just begun. Yeah. Be or how to, how to see clearly in English, so yeah. we, now the winter pause is coming, we have three more games left in the league, yeah. the, the winter break is long here, especially yeah. in third league and now, especially because of the World Cup, yeah. so it's for three and a half months, if I'm uh, not wrong, so uh, we'll see this winter break, how we will survive and how we will fight further. Right. Yeah. Okay, so I've asked you what's your proudest moment working for the club. Now I can ask you what's your proudest moment as a fan? Yeah, Oof. the proudest moments, one of my first games in general uh, was in 2010. I mean, when I went live in Europe uh, against Galatasaray from Turkey. Right, yeah. Uh, it was a away game over there. Uh, we were the underdogs. Uh, and they were leading 2-0 and it last like 15 minutes. We were like 50 guys over there. And in the last like 15 minutes we scored two goals and it was 2-2. Yeah. That, that's the game it finished. We celebrated it like we won the <laughs> Champions League. So that's one yeah. of the, I, I mean, how to say, uh, I connect all my greatest memories with the football matches, right? Yeah. Uh, also quarterfinals, uh, I don't remember if it was 2012 or 13. Yeah. If I'm right, quarterfinals against Red Star at their ground where we won 3 1. It was, uh, wow, well, it was like going to a rave, how we celebrated. We were singing, like, we were staying on the stadium for another one hour after the match finished, and we were jumping and singing and singing and celebrating. So, uh, what to say more? I don't know. There, there are many, you know, proud, uh, moments. proud yeah. moments yeah. Uh, for as a family with this club, uh, yeah. not so many in the past few years since we are in the third league, but even in third league we won the cup of Belgrade, because when you fall down yeah. the third league you, you don't play the cup anymore, the national cup, just the Belgrade cup, so we won the cup of Belgrade, which uh, was my only trophy actually that <laughs> I've seen, okay. and that I hold, yeah. so uh, that, that's it in general, I mean that's the moments yeah. that I would, you know, so what, what? You mentioned these matches, my well. I'm just trying to imagine what the celebrations are like. Was there a lot of beer drunk? Is that a silly question? You yeah, know, no problem. <laughs> uh, whoa, it was yeah. beer and rocky all the way, right? All the way, all the night until yeah. tomorrow. So, what was the hangover like in the morning? Was it a big headache? You know, I mean, you know, in general, when you have such a great win and celebrate, there's no hangover tomorrow. No hangover like tomorrow. Like still the happiness and you can keep still going, still keep going on. Amazing. So, yeah. Brilliant. Okay, can I ask you, what would the fans like to achieve at OFK? And what would you like the future to look like at OFK? 
the fans what we would like to achieve. I mean, uh, while we're running the club, right? That was yeah. the question. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in general, what we want to achieve is to stabilize the club uh, by running smoothly from month to month. Mm -hmm. uh, but what we are hoping for is that somebody comes sooner the better who will take over uh, the, to lead the club further, investor, whatever, somebody who is uh, very, very, how to say, knowledgeable in sports, in football, yeah. in yeah. general, uh, because our point is not to remain uh, running the club throughout the history, that's not what a fan would do, would, needs to do, yeah. we need to be here at the stadium, we need to be maybe in the board, some yeah. of us, you know, just to see, to, to make, to have a part in the club for deci decisions, yes. Yeah. Uh, but what we are hoping for is some, for somebody to come and to take over and to, to help our club, you know, to save our club uh, mm. from, from uh, getting locked down. Uh, what I would like, we would like for OFK to achieve is to, that what I said, but also to get back to the Super League as fast yeah, as possible. Land. Yeah, <laughs> to the promised land. To be at the top four as we were mostly. Uh, Compete, to, competing. Yeah, yeah competing. Yeah. Uh, you're, building, you're, you're yeah, a Europe, I really miss, first of all, I really miss the Super League, but the yeah. Europe and Europe trips and you playing in Europe, yeah. this is, I mean, everybody is living for this moment, every club, every fan in the world, so. Yeah. In general, this is what we want. We, we would love OFK to be debt free, yeah. all debts to be paid, and we would really love to uh, solve the problem with the stadium because, uh, as I told before, it's owned by the, by, by the city of Belgrade and to, we have a whole idea for architecture, everything. Uh, the point is not to renovate the stadium, it's too old, as you saw yourself. It's, it's, it would cost much more to renovate it uh, than to make a new one uh, because it's totally broken. Yeah. Uh, so we, we would like to have a new stadium, if possible on the same place, if not then very close to here. Right, okay. Very close to here, we would not like to change uh, big locations from this area. Uh, this is what we would like to have. A small stadium, I mean in general 8,000 seats. That's what we would, yeah. you know, be, be happy with and for our basketball club and handball and everybody to be here at the same place nice. because basketball club is over there, handball mm -hmm. is playing another place. We would all love to be here at the in same place the same because we are all a family, really as a club and as a, uh, because OFK means youth football club. Yeah. Uh, we have also the youth uh, sports uh, community, or what's it called? So, with handball, basketball, uh, judo, which we are athletics, nice. we are really, okay. really good at that. Yeah. Uh, I forgot probably someone, I hope you don't mind. We, we, we are all together as a family uh, working, and we would really love all together to be here. Yeah. To see each other every day and everything. So that that's what we hope for. We just hope for. We we don't you know dream about Champions League trophies. And, why not? You know, yes. Why not? Yes, yes. but yeah. we what we really want is to be back on track. Yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah. I understand. That's that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, Lazar. Well, that's all my questions done. I just want to end this interview with you know, yourself. Is there anything you want to say to the public regarding the club and how they can donate or how they can get in touch and maybe sponsor you? I would like first to say to everybody thank you for, for watching, for following you and watching this video and uh, if anybody wants to help they're welcome uh, by donate, by sponsorship, uh, we accept everything in this situation. Uh, we would really love for people to recognize us uh, all from around the world, uh, some from Europe even know for us, for what was playing against us a long time ago in, in uh, the European uh, competitions. Uh, I would like to ask everybody who can to help us out to bring Belgrade back on the place where we belong. And that's it in general. Brilliant. Thank you. Um,
I was going to say as well, I've spoke to a few people about OFK Beer Grad, and the love for this club, it's, it's second to none. There's people all over the world that have been showing a lot of love for this club. It's a club which is very much in the people's hearts, not only here, but around the world. So I'm hoping with this video you get sponsorship, you get donations, so people get your hands in your pockets and give generously to this big historical club. I'll leave a link in the description down below where you can donate, PayPal. Also, if you're a new sponsor, get in touch on is it Facebook or your website? Or Instagram, Facebook, yeah. website, uh, whichever. Yeah, I mean, we're, 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 yeah we're everywhere. We're even on TikTok, so. <laughs> there you go. Brilliant. Okay, as always, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for welcoming to the club. Thank you very much. Cheers. Sir. Thank you. Cheers. Just before I go, Lazar's giving me a t-shirt. It's a quality t-shirt. You can get these online soon, yes? Uh, yes, they're already online. Already online? They're already okay. online. Brilliant. Okay. It has a message. It says in Serbian, we'll, be, we'll bring Belgrade back. Brilliant. That's it. There you go. Get one of these t-shirts now.